the Oscars are coming up real soon. That's kind of like our Christmas down here in the basement. We're big fans of the big show. And let's talk about the Best Picture nominees. If it was up to me, the big short would be winning, although I'd be very happy with my number two choice, Mad Max, Fury Road. Spotlight is three. The Martian and The Revenant, very close, because it's basically the same movie, except one is happy. And then you have Room, Bridge of Spies, and Brooklyn. Brooklyn, which I don't think deserves to be in the running. That's a nice movie. It's a very regardless. nice movie. You watch the movie, you're like, yeah, you're enjoying it. And then at the end, it's like, well, she had to choose between these two awesome guys. <laughs> you know, it's it's basically a Nicholas Sparks movie. I'm really surprised that Revenant was so far down in your rankings. I, it was my favorite of the, of the eight movies. So this is really great, but I felt very detached from the entire movie. Hmm. I do kind of wish that they did a Martian Revenant mashup when Matt Damon meets up with Jessica Chastain he exacts his revenge I <laughs> they have this fight in outer space chopping off fingers and there's blood shooting out I love it when he when when he chopped off Tom Hardy's fingers and Tom Hardy went damn it <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how tough he is that's a mountain man right there <laughs> the big talk is that DiCaprio is going to win uh, best actor oh, go right ahead Mr. DiCaprio say he doesn't win yeah if he stood up and screamed god damn it <laughs> And stormed out of the auditorium and knocked over a chair on his way out. Yeah. I would not blame him one bit. Yeah. I would really be surprised if if his genitals are in working order from the (laughs) amount of time he spent in winter icy streams. He really does a fine job. You feel every icicle in his beard. You feel every pain in his body. And you Mm -hmm. feel every pain in his heart. Yeah. Amy is very good, but I would like to note that in the movie we find out that Amy Winehouse had a little black cat named Cecil. Oh, I've got a bunch of movies that I've never seen before. You don't know what they are. Every episode, I'm going to spring one on you. It might be good. It might be bad. We'll watch it and talk about it. Welcome to The Basement. Well, we've just missed Valentine's Day, but we're going to have a romantic evening together nonetheless. There is a certain genre of film that is aimed at a certain female demographic. Do you know what this genre is called? Chick flicks? Yes. Yes. I sort of despise this term. I find it to be patronizing, and I just don't like it, and I can't bring myself to say it. So if I need to, I'll have you do that for me. I will patronize women for the show. I don't know much about this genre, so I did some research to find out which of these... Chick flicks. ...were the most popular, and I've got one right here. It's quite interesting in our Oscar discussion that you mentioned Nicholas Sparks, because we'll be watching The Notebook. Oh, Notebook! Released in 2004, directed by Nick Cassavetes, son of legendary actor-director John Cassavetes, The Notebook also stars Cassavetes' stalwart and the director's mother, Gina Rollins. Cassavetes wanted someone unknown and not handsome to portray Noah, so he cast Ryan Gosling. <laughs> Who, as we know, is an ugly monster. Yes. He's ugly, and no one had ever heard of him before that, because he hadn't had an entire child acting career. Rounding out the cast are Rachel McAdams and James Garner. This movie swept the 2005 Teen Choice Awards, racking up eight wins, as well as one MTV Movie Award for Best Kiss. Is it this one? Could be. I'm guessing it's this one. If they got an award for it, they're going to put it on the cover. <laughs> this movie is called The Notebook. I'm wondering if you can guess what's in this box. A ticket to Maine? Oh. <laughs> it's candies. <laughs> I got you. Yeah, it totally got me. Well, all you fellas and chicks, we hope you're in the mood for this chick flick that we're going to watch on the old leather couch today. Gear up your emotions for The Notebook. Oh, coconut. <laughs> this looks like such a romantic boat ride. I hope he's not going out to dump a body. <laughs> Gina Rowland's enjoying the evening. Suddenly, a drunk and abusive Peter Falk bursts into the room. <laughs> it is a Cassavetes movie, after all. Yes, it is. Duke lives in a nursing home. I am no one special. Just a common man with common thoughts. I was on some pretty awesome TV shows, but I'm no one special. I've succeeded as gloriously as anyone who ever lived. Looking good, Duke. I've got black friends, but there's this old lady who's sad. You like him. He's very funny. He knows some very racist jokes. He starts reading her a story out of a notebook. The story of Noah and Allie, two young kids in the 1940s. They're at a carnival. Allie's on a date with a young fella, but 
Noah decides that he wants to go out on a date with Allie. She refuses. God, look at how unhandsome he is. Ugh. What a wretch. That was back before they had safety bars on those things. For nice, simple escapes and suicides. And, <laughs> and that. How do you like me now? I am rampaging onto your gondola. And I'm gonna hang from it until you say yes to a date. Fine, I'll go out with you. He sees her on the street the next day and says, how about that date? I was being drawn to you. Oh, geez, what a line. You use that on all the girls? You're the first girl I've ever seen. I grew up in a Skinner box. <laughs> God, he's so ugly. No. They go on a double date with some other friends to see Lil Abner. Uh, I don't like this movie. It's got too many bucks and women. I should have known. I've read the comic strip. Russ Meyer presents <laughs> Dog Patch. <laughs> kill, kill. Allie and Noah decide to walk home, and then things get weird. There's some lying down in the streets and looking at stoplights. My dad and I used to come out here and lay down and watch the lights change. What a miserable childhood. Could try it if you wanted to. If you like boring things. You see, you can't do this anymore because of Priuses. They can sneak up on you. Yeah. Check it out, man. He is weird. Just list of one after another. Oh, she's right. discovered him reading from his manifesto. <laughs> Allie goes to Noah's house to meet his dad, Frank. Look, you got a visitor. I'm noted playwright Sam Shepard. I'm basically an American icon. Just look at my face. I look like an American road map. <laughs> it's an empty pizza box. Mm -hmm. Well, that's beautiful. Snap. <laughs> I was being sarcastic. They do all kinds of fun stuff together. Swimming. Say I'm a bird. No. I will not let you express yourself in quirky ways. That's my thing. <laughs> now say you're a bird too. I want you to regurgitate in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Allie goes home and her father tells her. You bring him to the house or something. Won't meet this young man. I will meet this man or my name isn't Zorro. <laughs> the gay blade. <laughs> Allie's family is really rich. Noah's really poor. Allie's mother informs Noah that she's going off to Sarah Lawrence University. And Sarah Lawrence is in New York. And they have no lumber yards for you to work in in New York. <laughs> Sarah Lawrence has a really good lumber program. It does? Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Noah takes Allie to an old house. It's the Windsor Plantation. He says, someday I'm going to buy this house. I'm going to fix it up. It's going to be my house. And also he has a more short-term plan, which is losing his virginity with Allie right there in the parlor. This is good for all you young lovers out here. Let the other person undress themselves. It's a lot less sloppy. <laughs> Check these out. They start doing the nasty. Don't go rampaging for the clitoris. <laughs> but Allie just can't stop talking. She's nervous. She wrecks the mood. That's all right. We'll be able to do this sometime soon. They go back home. Mr. and Mrs. Hamilton finally throw down their, their demands. He is what? trash! Daddy. Trash! Trash! You should just go off to college and achieve our dreams for you. Yes, Daddy, I love him. I love him like you love mustache wax <laughs> and liquor. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and you can come with me. What am I going to do in New York? Have you not heard of a little street called Broadway? <laughs> He tells Allie that they're probably going to break up. They get all angry, and she slaps him, and he slaps him, and then they break up. I get the feeling that Duke's story is going to have a very Paul Harvey-esque twist at the end. <laughs> Allie goes to the lumber yard to say goodbye. Where's Noah? He was real depressed and distracted over by the table saw. That's the last I saw of him. Tell him I love him. I made a huge mistake. He's heartbroken. You're just going to make it worse. Let it go. Uh, I'm coming. No, you're not common. You're very, very rich. <sighs> Noah, meanwhile, has regretted breaking up with her, so he decides to write one letter a day for an entire year. He doesn't even care that the mailman isn't going to be showing up on Sundays and national holidays. But she doesn't respond. Heartbroken, Noah writes a final letter, and he and his buddy Finn enlist in the army. They were deployed to Patton's third army in Europe. One of them cried, and Patton slapped him. They're in some pretty hairy combat situations. Now we will attack this Patton. I hope he has not read my book. Finn dies. By the way, she said she loved. <laughs> Allie volunteers as a nurse. 
you're not Noah. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> and she meets this guy named Lon. I'm all beat up, but I'm in love with you. She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sleep it off, you old broken man. Turns out that once he's fixed up, he's a pretty handsome looking guy. And he says, hey, let's go out on a date. At a party, Lon proposes to Allie and she accepts. But for some reason, she just can't get Noah out of her mind. Noah, meanwhile, has returned from the war. Come on, there's something I gotta show you. I just wrote this weird play called Cowboys Number no. 2. What do you think <laughs> of it? And his dad informs him that he sold the house and he has bought the Windsor Mansion. And they're gonna fix it up together. Oh, Dad, we've made a huge mistake. I've never seen this place in the daytime. <laughs> Soon after that, his dad dies. Noah throws himself into his work and kind of becomes a drunk. He finishes restoring the house, and he gets his picture in the paper. Well, you know who reads the newspaper? It's Allie. She sees that he restores the house, and now she's having second thoughts about her marriage, which is impending. She tells Lon she needs to get some space and clear her head. Noah and Allie are reunited. He invites her inside. This room. Remember when we didn't have sex here? I do. Every time I'm in this room, and I'm in this room all the time. This is a good story. I think you're going to make a lot of money. And the movie writes, <laughs> Back in the present, we find out that Duke has kind of a bad heart. I'm Dr. Barnwell, one of the new attending physicians. We haven't met, so I thought I'd examine you myself. Want to get my finger up that ass of yours. Okay. <laughs> and deep breath. You know, I restored a house once. Oops, you weren't supposed to find that out until later. And that old lady has dementia. She don't remember things. Perhaps important things? Oh, I do wish I could figure out the end of this story. I wish I couldn't figure out the end of this movie. <laughs> you know, I think I'll run on up and take my afternoon nap. Thinking of he's working on my appetite. Looking forward to a little afternoon nap. Sky rockets not in flight. Afternoon nap. <laughs> oh, afternoon nap. Back in the 40s. Noah! <laughs> what? <laughs> now I'm sad. Yeah. Noah and Allie go out for a boat ride, and he takes her out to look at where the geese go. I like to come out here and drift amongst my namesake. Take a gander at them. <laughs> and if you'll stand up and turn your back to me, I shall give you a goose. But it starts raining, and they both laugh at the rain and laugh at life. She finally asked, where were the letters? Why didn't you write me? We could have done something about this years ago. And he's like, I did write you. Why didn't you get my letters? And she's like, ah. He never stopped loving her. And they share a passionate, award-worthy kiss. Then he's like, hey, we got more kissing to do and more body parts. Let's go back to my place. They go back into the house and have an epic lovemaking session. This one isn't interrupted by chatter. Non-missionary. Well done. <laughs> she kept the pearls on. Very classy. Yeah. Very Parisian. They're in love again. She's doing topless painting down on the on the porch. Like she's Venus de Milo doing up all the work. Allie meets with her mother. What's the deal, Mom? You stole those letters. Yes, I did. I have a reason for that. Let's go off to the lumber yard. Remember this, the lumber yard, your old stomping grounds? Well, I purchased it and I'm going to turn it into <laughs> a not lumber yard. And she shows Allie some old greasy guy and she was like, I used to be in love with him. We tried to elope. It didn't work out. So you see, you come from a long line of lumber sluts. <laughs> and just like with you and Noah, you, it's the same situation. I want you to know that I love your father. I don't care that at night he dons a mask and he <laughs> fights crimes with a little sword. Hey, toots. Long time no see. It's me, your old lover, Stu. <laughs> I'm still here. And here are all those letters which I've kept in the trunk of the car for years. Wait a minute, these all say Jenna, and they're from someone named F. Gump. <laughs> <laughs> Allie goes back to Noah. She says, I don't know what to do. I think I'm going to go back to my husband. What about what we have, though? We're in love. You just picture your life for me 30 years from now, 40 years from now? Is there some guy, sort of no. dementia or Alzheimer's? No. That's, that's a possibility. <laughs> he says, just leave. Uh, Duke finishes the story. The old lady doesn't know how it ended up. I know you feel lost right now, but don't worry. Nothing is ever lost or can be lost. Let's go inside. He's got a whole candlelight spread. They share a toast. Mmm, Thunderbird. Good choice. <laughs> suddenly, the old lady remembers. You're Noah, and I'm Allie. The story of the notebook is their story. Wow! 
Allie did go back to Noah, and they got married. Etc., etc., they dance. But unfortunately, her memory only lasts for a couple minutes. As that old devil dementia kicks in, she doesn't know who Duke is, she panics. And she's sedated and all gets very Cassavetes for a couple of minutes. The next day, it's not over yet. Duke has a heart attack. Let them know we're in full arrest. Call me on my cell. Well, they're arresting him? Why are they arresting him? Just because he danced with an old lady? Remember earlier on he drove his car into the gates of the mansion? It oh. Finally caught up to no. him. Okay, yeah. well, don't do the crime if you can't do the time. <laughs> That's right. Comes back a few days later and he says, hey, I want to see my wife. And the nurse says, you can't do that, but I'm going to leave the room for 10 minutes. So don't do that. Well, I guess I'll go steal some Vicodin from the pill dispensary. <laughs> What's going to become of us? I'm so forgetful in my brain. He says, doesn't matter. He crawls into bed with her and they both die. Loving each other and knowing who they were. Well, the notebook is over. Finally freeing us from having to look at the gruesome visage of Ryan Gosling. Yeah, yeah. Nothing is ever lost or can be lost. I can't find my debit card. So Duke was wrong. <laughs> Sorry, Duke. I think he's talking about memories and a love. Yeah, and the magical world of the notebook where you can just snap out of Alzheimer's disease for a few minutes, uh, you know, every few weeks. Uh, that's that's great. Do you think that this was authentic? I don't really don't think anyone would dress like Ryan Gosling dresses in the 40s, even around the house. I thought the dialogue was didn't even make an attempt to mimic the time. Yeah. The war just seems like something that happened to the boys. The death of Finn has nothing to... It happens, and then it, there's no, no mm. mention of it. It affects nothing. It's just there because that's a dramatic thing to happen. But the romance is there. This was a good movie, mm -hmm. but not a very good story. You know, very shortly into the thing, that Duke is Noah and she's Allie, and then you just gotta wait for it all to play out. You yeah. know the mother's gonna interfere. You know to, she's gonna eventually get the letters. It's just All this stuff is so played out. But it also shows you how you can take lame, standard story and plug in a bunch of amazing actors, and it works really well. When Rollins has her breakdown at the end, yeah. and also James Garner, and just how shattered he is in that moment, you know, it's like, that's what keeps the movie alive. Mm. It keeps my focus for two hours. Or most of two hours. It does go on about ten minutes too long. Best Kiss 2005 MTV Movie Awards. I think the downpour was doing most of the heavy lifting there. Normally for our Valentine's Day episodes, we watch tragic romances. I thought we'd have a little change of pace here. And did we? They both, Romeo and Juliet, at the end of the movie, they both croak it. Yeah, but Romeo and Juliet would not be tragic if they were both 80 and dying of old age. <laughs> After a full life together? Yeah, yeah. It had the wrong ending. I was really hoping that the twist ending would be that Lon was there reading the notebook and being like, this was the life you chose because you were never happy with me. So I'm going to tell you, Allie, that you chose Noah. That's a great And ending. to make it even darker, he could have been like, yes, and I'm Noah. <laughs> that would be taking it too far. But I, I think that is a, a more romantic ending where it's like, yes, you got the life you wanted. I'm giving it to you every day. The movie was a lot sexier and sensual than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. They really seem like they're having sex, and they move around and doing stuff that they don't un normally allow in R-rated horror movies. Sure, you're not seeing any body parts. R-rated horror movies? Uh, they're, you know, they're moving around and seeming to have a good time. Is, is romance horror to you? Is that is that something that just has, has come out now? The I, idea I, of, of romance is a, is a horror? Do you want to know my notebook story? Yeah. I, like, had this horrible heartbreak in my life that this woman didn't choose me. I've heard very little about this. Yes. You, you don't really talk about it. It was obvious that I, I was in, in just a really, really bad place. That was the closest I ever came to growing a beard. And I said I was not going to shave until I saw her again. It was between me, the poor kid, and some other guy who was a lot more successful for me. And the woman looked just like Rachel McAdams. I went through all this, and then I found out the plot of the notebook, and I'm like, God damn it! My life is a uh, is an is is an adequate romantic chick flick, and <laughs> how don't you pick up a girl, Matt? I don't dive into moving machinery and endanger everyone. Yeah, basically, I don't do the first five minutes of the movie. 
Yeah. Maybe 10. How do you ask a girl out on a date? I can say that how he did it was wrong, but I was always bad at asking girls out on, yeah, a, me on too. dates. I'm just, I didn't know how to do it. Although I'm sure that if I really like went through my notebooks, I could find that I probably did go out on dates. Go through those old notebooks. Take a little <laughs> trip into your memories. Someday you might not have them. It is kind of a wish with my journals that they would be something that could get me out of a stupor if I needed to. Well, has your romantic boat ride been interrupted by a rainstorm? If so, come into the shelter of our website. Welcome to TheBasementShow.com. You can see all the episodes that we've ever done, and there's a PayPal donation button where you can donate a few of your hard-earned dollars to support our hard rot show. Rot? We forged it with uh, heat and iron. Just like Lucy did, who says, Love to Matt, Craig, and Tona for my favorite show. Hey! Th thanks a lot, Lucy. If you want to find out who the rest of our donors are and see the cool stuff, get your notebook off of this stack. The cool stuff we get in our mailbag, you should check out Welcome to the Basement Unboxing. That is going to come out this Friday. We'll also have other surprises. You never know what is going to happen. Poetry and such. <laughs> it's going to be great. Hey, girl. It's time for Cena. I can do two. Seen it. For Seen It, we're talking more movies from the Oscars. Yes. Olivia Cooper writes, Seen It, The Martian. It seems as though Ridley Scott is a fan of the show. He's stolen your idea for You Can Sell Diamonds on Mars and switched <laughs> it to Growing Potatoes. Are you planning legal action? No. And I've seen it. Seen it. My favorite part about The Martian was Matt Damon's co-star, Mars. I thought the special effects in that were amazing. The landscapes that they created... It was like looking at a painting. Yeah. You know, I could watch him ride that little transport across the Martian landscape for an hour. I mean, it's just so beautiful. And it's such a testament to how you can take CGI, something that's so maligned, and use it to create this beautiful art. Raman Mustaches writes, Have either of you seen Ex Machina? One of the best modern sci-fi movies I've seen. Seen it. Uh, this was made by... Alex Garland, who I believe made 28 Days Later. I think this guy is one of the most visionary sci-fi creators out there. He always makes movies that are so unique and unlike anything you've seen before, which is what unique means. Yes. <laughs> well, you really believe Alicia Vikander is, uh, in fact, a robot. At the same time, you really start to believe that she's human because that's what the entire movie is about. It really seems like this is the movie she should have gotten the Supporting Actress nomination for rather than the Danish Girl. Yes, and also has Mr. Showing Up in every single movie that of the year, Donald Gleason. everywhere. I know. Went to watch The Revenant yesterday. I'm like, God damn it, Gleason. <laughs> yeah. Am I going to go down to see a play at the Civic Center? It's like, oh, Donald Gleason's in this too. <laughs> well, speaking of The Danish Girl, Emma Blake writes The Danish Girl. Like the imitation game, they could have left more of the true historical source material in and the movie would be richer for it rather than contrive relationships that didn't happen. Seen it. Not seen it. This is an important story. It's certainly an important time to be telling it. Yet the story is so precious and affected that it kind of fails to reach me on a gut level. At times, the movie is so florid and melodramatic that it almost makes you kind of want to laugh. I'd like to act out a little scene for you from The Danish Girl. Oh, all right. This is something that happened. The man is seeing a doctor about possibly having a sex change operation, something unheard of in the 20s. And so the doctor says to him, there will be two operations. In the first one, we will remove all of the male parts. And in the second one, we will construct the vagina. <laughs> and Eddie Redman goes... <gasps> That was probably an honest actor's choice, yeah. but it just, it, it's a little too over the top. Andrew Dibble simply asks, The Big Short, seen it. Seen it. I am not a fan. Really? I feel like this movie borrows quite liberally from the Wolf of Wall Street handbook. It does a lot of the same cutesy pie stuff talking to the camera, but to much lesser effect. I found it to be really derivative and overly cute. I found it to be almost a parody of the Wolf of Wall Street, to the point where they bring in the, the wife. Oh, in, in the bathtub. Yeah. But I'm not a fan of Wolf of Wall Street. I think Wolf of Wall Street totally glorifies the, the scoundrels of the world, while in this movie, it shows it in a, that it's a big gray area, that there are some people that are in for the money and they don't care what happens to the rest of the world. These aren't heroes. These are protagonists. These are villains that we're rooting for. I just found it very thrilling, and it's also the most important story of the year and one of the most important stories of our time. Which, of course, so was Spotlight. 
that's seen it. And that's our show. We were swept away, kind of, by The Notebook. If you haven't seen it, you should check it out. Chances are your girlfriend will like it more than you, but hey, who knows? Or your girlfriend can see it as being just this really kind of shallow, derivative, romantic comedy because your girlfriend doesn't have to fall into typical female tropes. My girlfriend didn't like this movie at all, and now she's my wife. Don't judge the quality of your girlfriends about whether or not they like The Notebook. Join us again in two weeks for another episode of Welcome to the Basement. We hope to see you then. Good night. Good night. Lon's here in town. Is he in that package you're holding? I've never met him. I don't know how big he is. Or how foldable. <laughs> he could be like Flat Stanley. You remember Flat Stanley. <laughs> he used to work at the lumber yard. He would run between the sheets of plywood. Yep. He used to be Fat Stanley until that accident happened. <laughs> I've succeeded as gloriously as anyone who ever lived.